We're here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018 to talk to an old friend about a very new product. So new that I didn't even know what it was. So I had to come over here and talk to Boris Popov of BRS Aerospace, but also now EFX Applied Technology, which I didn't know what that was. You probably don't know what that was, but you're going to learn. I'm Dan Johnson. It's my pleasure to hear about something new going on in aviation safety. So the blinking lights down on the floor, the images on the screen. You told me it was something about lasers, and I thought it was some way to resist some idiot pointing lasers at, a, at an airplane in flight. It's not that at all, is it? What is it, Boris? The entire concept is to provide a warning uh, to people uh, on the ground and also interact with the pilot on the aircraft that there's an intrusion about to occur. So imagine an aircraft carry at night where you have spinning blades, you have jet intake, jet exhaust, you have tail rotors of aircraft, uh, helicopters specifically, of, of course. But we have, uh, on the average, of four to five people killed a month on aircraft carriers. Is that right? And it's a significant number of people. And this is in a highly controlled environment already with lines painted exactly. on the deck and stuff. Exactly. There's no question that this is a device that's going to save a lot of lives, prevent a lot of injuries. But even in GA flight, as we're deeply involved with, the fact that there are people, uh, probably, I don't know, three or four per year, from what we've learned statistically, they walk in the propeller arcs. This is a very simple system. It simply shines a warning device, a warning pattern on the ground that warns people that you're about to step into a danger zone. So EFX Supply Technology is a company I formed with Stan Ross. Uh, we've got two patents that have been approved for this concept. And it's not just for aircraft, it's for VTOLs, and for any, any form of aircraft that has any kind of a spinning propeller or a jet exhaust, jet intakes. Well, anything uh, dangerous that anything you could dangerous. walk into. Yeah. And, and the key is, again, it's going to be interactive. Right, and, that, and the, it, the interactive part is really critical, because imagine a, a, a pilot sitting in the cockpit seeing a maintenance guy backing up, walking backwards, uh, okay. who's not seeing oh. possibly the light. Can't yell, because there's can't noises. can't yell, he's wearing muffs, and he's not going to hear. So the pilot will be notified that the, we, uh, there's about to be an incursion. Even with the laser warning going on, he'll be able to shut the engine down or do something to prevent the, the intrusion into the danger zone. And that's a really important aspect of this laser device. However, the other important thing is, is we can change this pattern that we project in all kinds of dimensions and ways. Uh, there, can be, there can be skull and bones, there can be the international distress uh, pattern on the ground, danger pattern on the ground. One of the keys to the success of this product is that it'll work in sunlight, it'll work on asphalt, it'll work on snow, it'll work on grass, it'll work on any kind of surface. It, but yet, it'll be eye safe. And it has to be eye safe uh, for the obvious reasons uh, from a re reflectability standpoint and that. But it only draws 5 to 20 watts, which well, is really minimal. Yeah. Really minimal from an aircraft uh, you know, power standpoint. So we're really excited about it. We've got a tremendous amount of uh, inquiries from the yeah, military. Yeah, name, name off some of the companies that have come around to talk to you about we've this. Had Pretty a, interesting. We've had Federal Express here, we've had uh, UPS, we've had uh, Boeing, we've had Airbus. I mean, it just the list goes on and on. It's, they all, they're flight operations people. We don't have to convince them. Uh, imagine painting lines on the ground and then it snows. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you, what Doesn't you work do? out too well then. You're gonna, you got to do a lot of shoveling. Right. But uh, there is a, in my 40 years of being in this industry, I've never seen such a positive uh, approval, immediate approval of the concept. Not one person has come up with a negative on this, whereas my BRS years, we right. had nothing but negative input at first. It's just when you have that moment of silence and they look at it and go, yeah, that makes sense. You, then you know you've got something. You've got that fundamental approval immediately from people. And so I'm really, I'm really excited about it. And I've, it's going to, my years of BRS, 386 lives saved. We're going to continue on with that process through cool. this, this company. Great stuff. And to your point about a person walking towards the aircraft, we can change the pattern based on the intrusion distance. Ah, really? So imagine you can have a... a so algorithmically it, it could go, uh-oh. It can go more and more flashing, larger and larger projection area, more and more graphics. I mean, we can go as graphic as we want to get on this. But the point is, is that it will, it will adjust itself based on the level of intrusion, which is really a fundamental, critical aspect of this of this patent. Yeah. Now you're showing a video here, uh, back here. I don't know mm -hmm. how well the camera will get that. I'll get out of the way mm -hmm. just in case. But you're showing a military aircraft. You know, where they right. they got a highly controlled environment to begin with. There's no Oshkosh people walking around here. These right. are people that know what the danger is, and yet they would be interested because 
you still got some really bad danger going on there, and especially a turbine engine, you're not stopping quickly. That's right. That's uh, right. So they want to warn people just as well to and, not and, do that thing. And, and in military operations, you got a lot of tired guys working long hours. You got maybe combat situations at, again at night and, and at all night kinds of and tough it's, it's uh, it, there's, a, there's an obvious need for this. I'm absolutely convinced. How hard is it to install these things in aircraft, Boris? Sure, and that's that's the practical aspects and concerns that a lot of people have. It's it from our current uh, estimates, it'll be between three to five pounds. Um, the draw will be like I said before, five to twenty watts, which is insignificant. Uh, certification processes should be fairly straightforward, especially acceleration programs that the FAA has told us uh, to proceed with. The FAA is extremely excited about this, and they're going to do everything they can to accelerate the certification process. But of course, you have the experimentals. You have a lot of other markets that won't, won't require that. Uh, so we we don't see any physical issues that that from a weight standpoint, from a cost standpoint, from a certification standpoint. None of that should really affect our ability to get this to market fairly quick. That's a lot of questions and a lot of answers. Where do we send people on the web to find out more, Boris? EFX Applied Technology is our website. Uh, they can certainly give us uh, give us a call as well. I'm sure you'll put the number on the bottom of the screen. Absolutely. You do. We will. And uh, feel free to get, get a hold of me or Stan Ross, the other partner in this, this enterprise. Okay, and since mm -hmm. we talked about BRS a little mm -hmm. bit too, give me the mm -hmm. BRS address as well, Boris. www.brsaerospace.com Okay, great. <laughs> I have nothing about this product yet, but lots and lots of stuff about BRS parachutes and all kinds of affordable aviation. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Boris Popov and myself here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018.